Hi, welcome to my channel. This time, we're going to be talking about calendars in Python. In your career, you might be dealing with some data that you want to convert from days to dates or from dates to days. I will show you how to do it in this hacker rank problem. If you've been following my videos, you will know that I will have a Jupyter notebook on the right side of my screen. I will have the hacker rank platform on the left side. On the far left, there is the task we're going to be tackling with. And in the middle is where we will write and submit the hacker rank code. Before I get into the details of this problem, let me tell you what the task is. In short, what hacker rank is asking us is when the user enters a date with the following format, as I have highlighted, month eight, day five and year 2015, it is asking us to provide the output as what day of the week it was. For example, 5th of August in 2015 was a Wednesday. That's the task for us to do. But let me quickly run you through a very cool package and library in Python. This library is called the calendar. I'm just Googling it like very simple Googling will show you what this looks like. So if you get into docs.python.org, which is a very good source of information for everything Python, you will see that there's a library called Calendar, and it will allow you to do many different things in Python using days and dates and days and years and such and such. I'm not going to get into the details of what this page shows you. I will leave it to you. I've got the link down below in the description. But for now, let me show you how to get this task done. First things first, you need to import the calendar library. That's what I've done right now. Then just remember that we will be receiving some input from the user. And if I write it in a comment, the input provided is something like this. It has got the month, the day and the year. How do I know this is the American way of writing the date? I have seen that in the task in HackerRank. So I'm expecting to see the month, the day, and the year. Now, the question is, when I receive this format, which will be as a string, if you haven't seen my video on strings, click on the link up the top right. But when I'm receiving something as a string, how do I change it into days and month and years? That's pretty easy, right? So we know that the input function allows the user to input something. So I am going to be inputting this format and it prints it out for me. But the problem is I want to be able to separate those three pieces of information. That's a very easy task. Again, go watch my strings video in my playlist. All you need to do is to use the split function, which now if I do the same import, it will give me three different elements, which is pretty cool. All I need to do now is to convert them from strings into numbers. How do I know that there are strings? Well, they've got quotation marks around them. You can see it. So if I use the map function and map them into integers, if you haven't seen my video on the map function, click on the link up the top right. That will show you everything about mapping. But if I do this and enter the same format, I will get a map object. For me to be able to see that map object, all I need to do is to convert it into a list. This should be our last step from converting a string that the user enters into month, day, and year. There you go. I've got a list that has got August and day five in the year 2015. But just remember, this is not me answering that task. This is me getting some input from the user, converting it to numbers, and getting ready to use the calendar library. Next thing I want to use is to bring in the calendar library and call the weekday function and then feed the year, which is 2015, the month, which is number eight, and the day. If I do this, you will see that it doesn't really like those zeros. Let me just get rid of those zeros. You will see that the calendar library just off the bat quickly tells me it's a Wednesday. So I am very, very close to having tackled this problem. What I really need to do is to get rid of this calendar dot thingy before this calendar dot Wednesday and just have Wednesday as the output. So let's do something a bit cleaner. What I will do, I will feed these into month, day and year. So that's what I will do. 0805 2015. Now I have saved the month into month 
day into day and year into year. Okay, now I have the month and day and the year. And instead of typing them in, I will type in the year, the month, and the day. I'm still getting the Wednesday. And I will save this into a variable called weekdays. If you haven't seen my video on variables in Python, the link is up the top right. Once I've got that one, there is another function in calendar library that I can use to get rid of that calendar dot thingy. I just want Wednesday as is. Use the calendar library and use the day name function. All you need to feed into it is the weekday. Ta-da, I got rid of calendar dot thingy. And believe it or not, all I need to do right now is to use the upper function for me to be able to print exactly what HackerRank wants me to print. So let's quickly wrap all of this into a function because that's way easier to use. I will make a function called guess day and I will feed the month, the day and the year. Once done that, all I need to do is to copy this line down there and copy the next line down there Maybe save it weekday cap right there and then return return weekday underscore cap. Now the result will always be use the guest day function, feed the month, the day and the year and print the result. If I run this, you will see that I've got exactly the output that HackerRank was expecting me to have. So all I need to do right now is to copy that bit into here to get the input from the user and then copy that bit into there. What I will do, I will run the code and see if it is successfully running with one test case. Let's wait for it. Ah, I forgot to import the calendar. Let me quickly import the calendar library, run the code again. The sample test case runs successfully. All I need to do is submit this case, which will run five to 10 more test cases, depending on the question. And now you can see that I have passed all test cases successfully. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for many more HackerRank solutions coming your way.